Hey everybody, I hope you're having a great day. I have got some nostalgia for you. This is what is supposed to be a brand new 28-280 Radio Shack Electronics Learning Lab. Now it's obviously been opened and uh, somebody had stuck some batteries in it, but as far as I know, it is basically new. Now I don't know what year this thing was made. Um, I was not able to find that out. It may be somewhere on the box, but I think that they made this for a long time. This is newer than when I was doing these things as a kid. The one I had as a kid was made out of cardboard, and the one that my dad had as a, as a kid was made out of wood. Um, and so the one that my grandfather had as a kid was made out of stone. Uh, but this is one of those learning kits that a lot of us who are into electronics had as a child. And so let's uh, get an idea for what the box says here. It tells you that it includes two project manuals, which I know this one doesn't, but they're available online, large, easy to understand circuit diagrams, clear explanations, and a solderless breadboard. Let's see what it says over here. Uh, supplied with over 40 st solid state components, including 16 ICs. Uh, custom developer Radio Shack. That is very cool. And there's a name here that if you're around my age, you probably remember this. Uh, the famed electronics writer Forrest Mims III. I had some of his electronics books as a kid, uh, probably when I was 10, 11 years old. Um, so I have definitely read some Forrest Mims. But I do not have an actual electronics background for as much Arduino stuff as I do. Um, I'm kind of fudging it as I go along. And so I'm interested in kind of playing with some of the things in this kit. And then maybe I'm thinking that this thing could make an interesting prototyping station. So without further ado, let's open it up. Now I have had the cover off because when they told me it was new, I was a little, I thought it was a little dubious. So I did open it up in the back and saw that there were some batteries that had leaked a little bit in there. But uh, fortunately, we stuck six new AA batteries in there and uh, and were able to test it at least enough that it, we were getting power from here to the ammeter. So that was good enough for me. If worse comes to worse, then this thing is a shell, then it's a shell. Um, but as I said, there's no manual in here. I can find it online. Uh, let's do a little tour of the board. We have a power switch here which doesn't actually give us any kind of indication. There's not nothing that uh, that turns on or anything just by flipping on the switch. We've got the seven segment LED that comes with a lot of the Arduino kits. We have uh, 10 red LEDs with these awesome spring terminals over here. A uh, milliamp meter, uh, let's see here, zero to one milliamp. So this thing can only handle up to one milliamp. That's interesting. Uh, I have a photoresistor here, a buzzer, a speaker. Uh, I've got a little transformer here, 59, 60, 61, so 500 ohms. Yeah, find out what that's all about. Uh, this breadboard is, is interesting. We've got grounds along the bottom, and you can see here we have 1.5 volts, 3 volts, 4.5, 6, 7.5, and, and 9 volts. Um, <clears throat> so that's, that's interesting, and that's, that's sort of what has me thinking about this as a little prototyping station. Uh, we've got this one meg potentiometer here. We have a 100k and a 10k pot here. Um, double pole, double throw switches, some push button switches, a relay down here, which is interesting. I'm interested in seeing how that looks. And so that is about the board. Um, now what I'm thinking with this is the first thing I'd like to do, I'm not trying to keep this thing stock. In fact, I am planning on eventually modifying it. So what I'm thinking maybe about doing is, I don't know that I'm gonna get rid of the ability to put batter batteries in it, but I think what I'm gonna do is take one of these Arduino uh, power cores and put a barrel jack back here. So instead of using batteries, I can use a, uh, you know, can use the, the wall power. And then I think maybe what I'm going to do is add a, an LED on there to tell me that the power is on on this thing. And then from there, I don't really know. Now, what I've heard is interesting about these kits, and I haven't seen it with my own eyes, is what's in this box. And so we have the original, what appears to be sealed, components that came with it. So we've got some resistors, quarter watt resistors, some ceramic and electrolytic capacitors, 
uh, some Zener diodes and red and green LEDs. Uh, we've got some different electrical wires and a ceramic earphone. And then let's look at, uh, let's go through. We're going to look at these first before we get to the ICs. So, uh, yeah, we've got some electrolytic capacitors. Are they brand name? They are Acon capacitors. I don't know if they have any chutes left in them. We'll see. Uh, got these other little disc capacitors here. Some resist. Man, it's it's crazy. You know, if you order even quarter watt, watt resistors from AliExpress, like I mean, this pack of how many resistors? Like uh, this pack of maybe thirty resistors weighs more than a hundred quarter watt resistors today. Like there's real metal and real weight going on there. And then, uh, you know, back in the day, you, know, you guys that buy a thousand LEDs for a dollar, uh, man, having LEDs was not cheap back in the 80s. And so to be able to have a red and green LED along with some of these Zener diodes, very sweet. Um, so we have some of these breadboarding wires here. Uh, let's see. A little headphone. Now, I remember as a kid, I, I think the one I have is a little bit bigger than this, but I remember as a kid building a crystal radio. And for those of you who don't know, you can actually build a uh, a battery-free AM radio uh, using a crystal and some other components. And so that was one of my first electronics projects as a kid, and I'm guessing that's what this is for here. And we've got some other prototyping wires there. Now, what really interests me is what kind of ICs and stuff we have. And so let's uh, let's cheat and let's look at the top here. We have, um, let's see, we've got a quad amp, quad op amp, 324. We have um, a CMOS quad two input NAND gate, 4011. We've got a NOR gate, 4001, two of those. We've got a dual flip-flop, 4013 a decade counter and decoder 4017 we have a phase locked loop 4046 a hex inverting buffer at 4049 we have a quad bilateral switch 4066 a uh, four bit pre settable up down counter at 4029 a seven segment decoder 4511 you guys have seen those before uh, we have an ic exclusive or gate 4070, uh, IC dual op amp 272, power amp 386, those are really common, quad comparator 339, 2555s, that's awesome, and uh, 7805 regulator, as well as a couple of uh, NPNs, PNPs, and MOSFETs. So, you know what the thing is, like, I review a lot of startup, man, those even look like nice chips. There's nice screen printing on there, and they're just nice quality looking stuff. Um, this is the kind of thing that kids don't get in their electronics kits these days. And so I'm excited to play with this stuff for myself, and then I'm excited to see what I can do with this kit. So what do you guys think? What would you do with this thing? Would you modify it in any way? Would you leave it stock? So this is Dan from the future, and I finished recording this video and walked away and then did a little bit more thinking. Um, I think maybe we should do this AVE style, and before I actually start using this thing, I need to tear it down. Uh, I've got a couple things that are kind of running through my mind. Um, looking at this, if you look right here, you can see that each of these breadboard sections are listed at 1.5, 3, 4.5, basically 1.5 volt increments um which makes me think that they're not using some kind of buck converter but instead they're tapping into the individual cells under here in the battery compartment and uh i'm not an expert at this but i think that's actually a problem i think that as you you know let's say if you start using the 1.5 volts a lot and you drain down that first cell then the other cells are going to try to charge the first cell in order to balance themselves out. And that's actually what causes them to leak. So that, that looks like two potential problems. One problem is that you can't do what I was thinking about doing and putting a nine volt Arduino adapter on the back. And you also have to worry a lot about the cells leaking. Um, so that's very interesting. So I think it's going to be worth uh, tearing this thing down. Hopefully I don't break it. Uh, but maybe we'll take a look at it and see what's on the inside. So 
just as I suspected. For one thing, it's beautiful in its own way. Uh, it's simple, but it's beautiful. Uh, but they are also not using buck converters to adjust all that power. They are coming in here and tapping in off of the individual cells. And that, to me, I don't know that I'd go as far as calling that a design flaw, but it's definitely a, uh, a design issue. So let's take our little tour around the board. We have a power switch here. We're only using two of the poles. And then uh, coming down here, we've got those three pots, each with a little resistor in here to the middle leg. We have our double pole, double throw switch, just like this one. Uh, here we've got those push buttons, I believe. Yeah, there's some push buttons that are going into these spring terminals, an 8 ohm speaker coming in here. Uh, these three things are the, uh, is it a microphone? What is that? That's a buzzer and a photoresistor that are down here. And this is that one milliamp ammeter and our breadboard. Uh, let's see what this is. This is that transformer and these are the LEDs. So there is some corrosion here. I was uh, a little concerned about that battery leakage and it seemed like the thing it got on most is obviously that seven segment display, which I'm not a giant fan of those things anyway. Um, so there's good news and bad news. The good news is that I looked at the manual for this thing and it is excellent. There are very, very good tutorials uh, for this thing. So I think that's really cool. I'm actually going to go through those tutorials. I, you know, there's some gaps in my electronics knowledge that I would love to fill. And then, uh, as far as using this long term in this configuration, I don't really like doing it that way. I don't like having to keep batteries in there. Um, so I may do something where I adjust, maybe I do 5 volts and 3.3 volts instead of doing all these other things. I do a couple of buck converters and, uh, and find a, a cooler way to wire this thing up. I've got a couple of other ideas of some modifications I can make to this thing. It's not extremely valuable. They go for around 40 bucks on eBay. I paid a lot less than that for it. Um, a lot less than that for it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, what do you think of the kit? What you would do to this kit? If, uh, let me know if I'm crazy about not loving the batteries being hooked up this way. Uh, if you think that, that contributed to this leakage. So anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching and uh, have a great day.